In this video, I'm going to be implementing all of the different higher order array methods. This is things like for each, map, filter, reduce, and so on. This is a great project for you because it's going to help you prepare for interviews since lots of interviews ask these types of questions. And also it's a great way to test your JavaScript skills because if you can easily recreate this, then it's going to mean that you have a pretty good understanding of JavaScript. Also, if you want to check out my full cheat sheet, this is going to look just like this. It's about arrays. It has everything you need to know about arrays on it. It's going to be linked down in the description below. It's completely free. It just is a great visual representation of all the different array methods out there. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. In this video, we're gonna be re-implementing all the major array methods, the higher order ones. So we have for each, map, filter, reduce, sum, every, flat, and find. We're gonna be re-implementing every single one of these in our custom implementation so we can really see exactly how they work. And it's a great way to really dive into JavaScript, practice interview questions, and just test your overall skills. Now, if you wanna tackle this project on your own before watching this video, go down in the description below. I have the GitHub repo linked, and you're gonna see this giant test file here, which contains tests for all of these different methods. If you can get all of these different tests to pass, then that means that you are able to implement these correctly yourself before watching this video. And we're gonna use this test file as we go through this video to make sure everything works. Now, currently I have the actual array implementation for all these methods being ran, and you can see all of our tests are passing. Well, if I comment this out and comment this line in, this is importing from our own custom file, which is completely empty. So when we save, you're gonna see everything fails because we don't actually have these files and these functions defined. So what we need to do is just go ahead and we're gonna start with for each as the first one. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna create a function called for each, and inside this for each function, we're gonna take in a callback, and at the bottom, what we wanna do is say our module that exports, is going to export this for each function as well as all our other functions. So at least now we have our for each function, but our test is still failing because obviously we're not doing anything inside of it. It's expecting all this stuff to happen, but it's not happening. Let's implement the for each function. This one is by far the easiest. So hopefully you can get this one on your own. Essentially, all we're just gonna do is create a loop. So we're gonna say let i equals zero. i is less than our array dot length. And for this, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pass our array in with our for each method. And that's because I don't wanna add this for each method onto the end of our array class because the array class already has this method. So we're just gonna pass our array into the for each method. That's how all of my different tests work. As you can see inside of here, when we call for each, we pass in our array and then we pass the function. This is just how this is going to work. So we're gonna say when it's less than our length, then we're gonna add one to i inside of here. Then we're just gonna call our callback with our array at the ith index. And we also wanna pass in the index and the array property. If we don't do this, you're gonna notice our test fail. We don't have anything passing, but if we do, then you can see we will have one passing test. The reason for this is the way the for each method works is when you have the callback, it's going to not only get the current element, but it's also going to get the index of that element. And it's also going to get a copy of the array passed along as well. This is really useful for if you wanna do additional stuff with like the index, for example, that all needs to make sure it gets passed along. And if you wanna make sure yours is an exact clone of the for each method, of course you need to make sure you pass that information along. And the next thing I'm gonna cover is map, which is just a little bit more confusing than for each, but still pretty similar. It's actually gonna work very similar. So we're gonna copy over our array. And for here, what we wanna do is we wanna get a new array, which by default is gonna be just nothing. And we wanna at the end return that new array. And in the middle here, we wanna take whatever our callback returns and push that into our array. So we're just gonna push that into our array just like this. And now if we just return our map down here and save, we now have two passing tests. We scroll up, you can see for each and map are both passing. And that's because with the map function, all we're doing is we're taking in a callback. Whatever that callback returns, we use that as the new value for our array at that position. So for each and map, those are completely done. Let's move on to filter. And filter is very similar to our for each and map. So I'm just gonna copy down our map and we're gonna use this for our filter function as a base. And that's because inside of filter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be returning a new array of values that actually pass this callback right here. So what I'm gonna do inside of here is I'm gonna get our element is going to be equal to our array at the ith element right there. And what I wanna do is I wanna call our callback with all that information. So we're just gonna copy this up here. But instead of element, I'm just gonna put, or instead of array, I'm gonna put element right there. And we're gonna put a simple if check here. So if this is successful, then that means that I wanna add the new element to my array. So I wanna push the element in there. Otherwise, if this is false, we're not gonna add that in. And that's how the filter works. If whatever the callback returns is true, then we're gonna add that element to the array, we're gonna return it. Otherwise, if it's false, we're not going to save that value. And if we save, scroll up here, you can see now we have the passing test for filter done. 
Those right there were by far the easiest method, so we were able to knock those out pretty quick. But we're going to move on to reduce next, which gets a little bit more complicated, obviously, because the reduce function is one of the most complicated array methods out there. I actually have a full video covering the reduce method if you want to check it out in the cards and description down below. I also have a full video covering all these different array methods and some more even on top of it. I'm going to link those in the cards and description down below as well if you want to check that out. Now for our reduce method here, what we want to do is we want to just loop through our array like we've been doing for everything. So I'm just going to copy this same exact loop over here. And our reduce method is a bit different than all the other ones because instead of just taking an array and a callback, it also takes in an initial value. So we're going to come in here. We're going to say initial value just like that. So we're going to have our array. We're going to have our callback and then we're going to have our initial value. Also something that's a bit different is the way we call our callback. Instead of just passing the element, the index and the array, we're also going to be passing over essentially the cumulative value that we're storing inside of this. And by default, the first thing that gets passed in is the initial value. So on the first time that we call this, we pass in our initial value as well as all the additional information. And then our callback is going to return to us a new value. And that new value is what we pass along the next time we call our callback. So we're just going to take our initial value we're going to set it to whatever gets returned from this callback. That way, the next time we call our callback, it's going to pass in that new initial value. And then at the very end of our reduce, we're just going to return that initial value. Now, this right here is going to work for the most part. But if we save and we look over here and we scroll up to our test, you're going to see it's still not 100% passing all of these tests. The reason for that is we actually need to down here make sure that we pass in the reduce method to our exports. Now, if we scroll down, we should see one of these tests passing. You can see right here with a starting value, it's passing. But with reduce, you can actually pass no starting value at all. And the starting value will default to the first element in your array. So we need to use a little if check here that says if our initial value, whoops, initial value is equal to null, then what we want to do is we want to take our value, which let's actually set to a variable called current value. And by default, it's nothing. So here, our current value is equal to our array or just our element is the first element in our array. So if our initial value is currently null, that means we didn't pass anything in. So our current value is just going to be set to whatever our current element is, which is the first element in our array. Otherwise, what I want to do is I want to take our current value, set it to this initial value, pass our current value in here, and return our current value down here. This is just a little bit easier naming wise. So what we've done essentially is we've taken our initial value, said, hey, if we didn't pass one in, default it to our first element, otherwise just continue as normal. Now, if we save, we should see both of those test paths in. Let's scroll up to the top, and it looks like they did not pass as we expected. It looks like the reason that these didn't pass is because I didn't set my initial value here, because by default, our current value should equal our initial value. Now, hopefully, that'll fix our test. Let's just scroll down to make sure. We scroll up here. You can see our reduce with a starting value is working, but with no starting value, it is still not working. The reason for this, obviously, is right inside of here in my if statement, I'm just forgetting to check to make sure i is equal to zero, because this should only ever run the very first time that we go for our array. So if the very first time we run our array, the initial value is null, then we set the current value to that element. This should hopefully fix the error. Let's scroll down and see. And now you can see all of our reduce functions are passing. Now we can move on to sum, which is going to be a little bit easier, which is going to be nice change of pace here. So we're going to say sum takes in an array and a callback. And the way sum works is if anything returns true from this callback, then we're going to return true totally. So let's just loop through our array. I'm going to copy down our loop right here, just so we don't have to keep pasting that down every single time. There we go. And all I'm going to do is say, hey, you know what, if our callback for our array at the ith element with obviously our array and the index being passed in returns true, then we return true. Otherwise, down here, we return false. That's all that sum does. And now if we check our test, you can see our sum tests are passing. And again, the reason this works is because sum, if any of the values return true, we return true for everything, otherwise return false. Next, we're going to do every, which is very similar to sum, but it's essentially the opposite. Everything has to return true, otherwise we return false. So if any of these return false, then we're going to return false up here. And only if we get past everything, then do we return true. So now let's check to make sure every works. And as you can see, every and sum both work. They're very similar functions. And the next method I want to cover is the flat method. And this one is another confusing one. And that's because it uses a lot of recursion. And by default here, when you call flat, so let's just say you have an array and you call the flat method on it like this, by default, it's essentially passing one as your depth. If you pass nothing, it passes one as your depth, which is why we say depth equals one right here. And the way flat works is if you have an array that has nesting like this, where you have an array inside of an array, it'll flatten this out so that the end result will just be an array like this. But if you have even higher levels of nesting, 
then it'll only flatten you one level of nesting. So it's going to get rid of one level of array and return to you a new array that removed one level of nesting. But if you pass in, you know, for example, a depth value that's three, it's going to get rid of three levels of nesting, or you could even pass in like number dot, whoops, number dot infinity, positive infinity, and that's going to get rid of all your levels of nesting. So we need to make sure we implement all those different use cases when we deal with flat, and recursion is the easiest way to do that. So again, as we've done in every example, we need a simple for loop. And in this one, we're going to need to also get a new array because we're going to be returning a new array of values, which is going to start out as an empty array. And then inside of this for loop, we're going to return at the end actually here. So inside the for loop though, what we need to do is we need to think about how this flat's going to work. So first we want to say, you know what, if we have an array, so if our current element, let's just get that real quick. We'll come up here and copy that code so we don't have to type it again. So if our current element is an array, so let's say array dot is array, our element, and if our depth is greater than zero, so that means that we have more depth to go through, then what I want to do is I want to add this element to our array and I want to call flat again. Otherwise, what I want to do is I just want to add the current element to the array. So the reason I'm doing this is because if we have an array and our depth is greater than zero, then that means that we need to do some kind of flattening of our array. And then I'm just gonna call that flat method. I'm gonna pass it in my element because we know it's an array so we can flatten it. I'm gonna take my current depth and I'm gonna subtract one because we're getting one level deeper. And what I wanna do is I wanna take our new array. I wanna push in the result of this and I actually wanna spread this out. So to explain exactly how this is working a little bit more, essentially what we're doing here is we're looping through our current array. So let's say our current array gets passed in, it looks like this. Okay, so the first time we get into our flat method here, let me just move this up, we're going to have one as our element. One is not an array, so we're just gonna be adding it to the end. Same thing with two, two is not an array, so it just gets pushed in. So our new array currently looks like this, one, two. The next value gets pushed in is this full array right here, which is three comma four comma five. So this is going to come in here, we're gonna say, hey, this is an array, and by default, depth is equal to one, so our depth is greater than zero. We're gonna call flat again, and we're gonna pass in this value right here as our array. So now our new array looks like this, that's being passed in. We loop through this, the first time we get three as our element, so we're gonna push that to the array. The second time we get four, five. Well, four, five is an array, but our depth is currently zero, because one minus one is zero, so it's not greater than zero, so we're just gonna add that onto the end. So now the returned value that we're going to get looks exactly like this. So we're now returning this new array. This new array looks like this and we're spreading that out. So we're gonna have three, four, five inside of our new array right here. And this is what gets returned to us. If for example, our depth was set to two though, well then what would happen is we would go one more level of nesting and this would get nested down and return four, five, which would then come out here as four, five. And then finally in our end result, it would also get set as four, five. That's how this flat method is working. And if we save, we can see if this is working as we expect. And as you can see, every single test for our flat method is working. Only method we have left is find, and this one is pretty easy to implement. It's gonna take in, whoops, an array and a callback. And whenever this returns true, we just wanna return our element. So let's just copy our every for now, that works fine. And what I wanna do inside of here, loop through my array, I wanna get my element. So we'll just copy this code down to get the element. I wanna call my callback. I'm gonna say callback with my element, index, and array. And if this is true, return the element. This is just gonna find the very first thing that matches this callback. And that's all we're doing. Now, if we save, you can see that that find method is also passing. And that's all you need to do to create these really simple array methods. If you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna love my free array cheat sheet. It's linked in the description below. It covers all the different array methods you need to know, even ones not covered in this video, and it gives you great examples of exactly how to use them. That's going to be linked down in the description. I highly recommend you check it out. It's completely free. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.